Why does it sound like she's drinking a Sprite? Something about this opening that just commands my attention. Maybe because it's counter to the standard? Instead of being like so huge and epic, big, loud, it's just kind of slow and soulful. And then the images are kind of haunting. And then Saga Season 2, Episode 5, Path of Blood. Here I was looking forward to chopping down trees. We interrupt our regular, regularly scheduled lumberjacking for war. Who is that? Is it Canute? Oh, get to rewatch this one. This classic. What's Thorkel up to? Probably causing havoc somewhere. God, I remember watching this for the first time. It just escalated so quickly. <laughs> uh, it's insane. It's insane and glorious. He's fine. That's a lot for Kanu to take on. His first time as king. Yeah, I think Thorfinn's doing alright for himself as a slave. Probably making the right choice sitting it out. Could be a lot worse for him. He could be just still in this mess. But he's gonna get pulled back in, most likely. But maybe in a way that's more in control, less reactive, like Askled warned about. Stronger and more personally connected, more righteous, less just wild animal looking for revenge. <laughs> Oh, the dog. Can't wait to see how Kanuta has developed in this time, or he's at now. His scenes with the priest in season one were some of my favorite. <laughs> Yes, the land. Damn. Following orders is a military custom. Gunner. You do it. <laughs> you, do, you do this thing that is unpleasant. Ooh. Bunch of familiar faces. Floki made it, huh? Speaking of Thorfinn, that's really interesting. Thinking about what could happen in the future. I mean, if there's any ounce of Thorfinn that still wants revenge, you could definitely see him directing some of that at Floki, our favorite humanitarian and all-around great guy. Why does it feel like Floki's trying to keep him out of it? Floki's... he's tricky. He's a tricky guy. There's Thorkel, <laughs> causing mayhem, as, uh, as expected. The man knows who he is. Don't really know how to... yeah, I don't know how to scale that. He is the weirdest comic relief character of all time. Comic relief of wanting to drink the blood of your enemies, decapitated heads. There you go, you got a new mission. It's a very brave man. Put their hands on Thorkel. Yeah, yeah, that was inevitable. 
I mean, he can do it. I was thinking that he just justifies his worth enough that he can say whatever the hell he wants. Assuming you're his size and strength, <laughs> otherwise, it's gonna be a short life. It's an interesting warning, though. I wonder what it means for Knut and his progression. I mean, like, in all likelihood, Thorkel's right. Out of all the ways you can describe the world of Vinland Saga, peaceful, not one of them. Reasonable, just not one of them. It doesn't mean it's impossible for Knut to rule and rule well in a way that minimizes violence. It's just very unlikely. And I think Thorkel is right to give that warning, and it is a danger for Knut if Knut is blind to the, the actual danger, the reality, the things he would need to do and overcome if he wants to rule in a way that is not full of similar bloodshed we've seen in the past. Ideals don't really mean anything if they're backed by pure delusion. So interesting catch up, Canute. He's still on this path of blood. I don't think that's... I mean, we got that. We got a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, am I right in assuming he, he's controlling an empire at this point? Is the implication of that that he just killed those... <laughs> that leader of Mercia? There was no mercy in Mercia that day, maybe. It must be a great feeling to have so much at your disposal that you just cannot be bought, and there's no one who can make you do anything. Dangerous place to be, but also kind of thrilling. But that's a real test of who you, you are. Oh, Oh good. Oh good. Lumber. It's getting worried there for a second. One of these things is heavier than the other. I step on your silver for some reason. Some things can't be bought. おにたいするその不景につけた値段がこのハシタガネか。Damn, Knut just has them, totally. And he's still gonna take the silver, probably. Right. Edric, this is the this is the best path for you. Way, way better than the alternative. You know what's coming to mind watching this scene is remembering the warning of King Sven to Canute, talking about the crown. That really beautiful scene. The crown just wants more. Nobody actually really wants money itself, right? It's always gonna be a means to an end to something. For a lot of people, it's just not having to do the things you hate doing, not having to answer to people you hate answering to, having access to things that we covet. But there's a point at which money stops being able to buy you things, and then what's next is power. And of course, there's a correlation because Oftentimes, the way to exert influence on other people is by giving them things that they want, which oftentimes can be bought. But it can't buy everything, especially when people are full of conviction about what they're worth or what their ideals are worth or what they're defending is worth. At which point you go up the chain of escalation and it's like just force exertion, destroying people, removing them from your path, etc. Does Knut have some kind of holy mission? Does he have some kind of greater plan? Or has he fallen exactly into the trap that King Sven warned him about? Oh, are we seeing... Are we seeing what happened before the poisoning attempt? Did he try to poison him? You killed the dog, Edric? You deserve to die. He's in no position to bargain. Speaking of escalating to force. Edric. 
What are we looking at? That is a giant stack of sticks. What are we burning? I don't know. I don't know. I'm impressed they managed to stack it so high. Something real bad just happened. What's in the box? That was a very effective display. But notably, if I'm understanding this, he didn't actually do anything, so burn some sticks. But I believe he would. I mean, I don't think he's... I know he's capable of it. Got him. Don't eat or drink anything ever. What a shock! Surprise! Told you not to eat or drink anything. Thorgo does not approve of this poisoning. He just wants to smash. Might be heading into peacetime, at least temporarily. Man, Knut, the incompetent son, who was seen as a nuisance by his father, doing what Sven couldn't. And he was satisfied and lived happily ever after, ending bloodshed once and for all. Mixed feelings. It's terrifying. It feels dark? At the same time, it's hard not to admire the trajectory, the growth, just in terms of where he started as this quiet, shy, terrified little child to conqueror of lands and kingdoms. Like, what would Ragnar say if he could see him now? Why do I get the sense that Canute taking control of England is the start of the conflict? So I wasn't expecting to see Canute this episode, and it's interesting to get this catch-up on him to add more to the mixed feelings I have about this. He's kind of ruthless and cutthroat obviously has no problem just murdering people in his way or people who are not living up to his ideals at the same time is trying to avoid violence when he can the danger i guess is that he's the judge jury and executioner there's no real checks for canute you can imagine someone getting lost in that what keeps him grounded it's not that he has no ideals it's not that he's uh, this bloodthirsty monster. I recall him talking about creating a paradise on Earth, and so he has a vision that it's connected to, and he stands for something. Just as a gut feeling, I don't trust it when people are claiming they're going to, like, fix everything or fix some fundamental element of humanity through any kind of engineering, especially when that comes with the concept of the ends justify the means. Because the ends, paradise on Earth, or just peace or whatever, it's not really a guarantee or not something you can ever force on humanity. Maybe you can have a good period of time, but you're not going to just change human nature. In the meantime, what kind of carnage are you creating? What kind of atrocities are you committing yourself? And even if we could theoretically achieve the ends you want, how do we know that you are the correct judge of the idea that those ends are the correct ends or the noblest ends that justify mass death, let's say, or even just localized death? Thinking about Canute in this episode compared to the broader picture we've seen so far from Vinland Saga, there's a lot of characters that seem to want peace, or at least a few notable ones. Thors, who's basically Jesus for us, desired peace peace himself. You can't really say that Canute and Thors are the same. I wonder where Thorfinn fits into all this because he has Thors as his reference point. He has been down the road of just mass violence and is suffering for it and trying to work through it. Whether or not he comes out of it right away or comes to a peaceful place immediately, I think that's probably where he's headed. What happens, I wonder, if Canute and Thorfinn come into conflict? What happens if they meet again? I remember there was that whole uh, discussion about love with the priest and I kind of still hate it. <laughs> Like, I hate the final assessment that the priest came to. Not that there isn't some truth to it. You know, there's some truth to the idea that people love conditionally. There is somewhat of a contradiction, if you really think about it, to deeply loving the people you know, but seeing people you don't know as sort of inhuman in a, in a sense, or not having the full weight of a human soul that you attribute to the people you actually do care about. 
because they're also human. They have the same human reality that your, your loved ones do. But what I didn't like about it was the separation from nature that God's love exists in like the animal world or the natural world in the snow and the trees etc but that that somehow doesn't extend to humans and the way humans are if you're going to go that route if you're going to say that god created all this divine beauty then you have to attribute that same beauty to exactly the way humans are in the full capacity and the full range of what they are which includes what he would call discrimination forming tight bonds with people protecting your inner circle and your loved ones etc there's a reason that that exists it's not an accident should you love someone or be able to love someone who is threatening the people in your inner circle yeah maybe on some level you can understand them and still take preferential treatment. If you stand for everything, you stand for nothing. Going back to Thor's, I don't think that's what Thor's was. I think Thor's higher than that. I think Thor's did deeply love his family. I don't think he loved everyone equally. A lot of his decision was about protecting Thorfinn. He also happened to be nonviolent because he understood the broader implications of what that meant. You know, I think both are possible at once. So we have the super high ideal and then we have all these characters getting out of their world, you know, questioning their violent world, trying to form a better path for themselves. Yet all feels incomplete. And so it feels to me like these ideals or these varying interpretations of what peace means are going to have to come in conflict at one point. And we're going to see what actually wins out, what actually is true peace, what actually can match Thor's vision.